everybody welcome to Coffee with a Codex. Uh, my name is Dot Porter and I am a curator in the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I split my time with the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies, which is a research and development institute uh, within the Kislak Center. And my work focuses on um, pre-modern manuscripts and digitization and virtual um, presentation of manuscripts. And in virtual, I don't just mean di like digital images, I actually include video in that. And so this is part of that kind of part of my program. So every Wednesday at noon Eastern time, I have this sort of 30 minute uh, Zoom call where anybody who wants to can come and we're gonna look at a manuscript or sometimes two, or in today's case, many more than two. Um, so today we're looking at MS Call 591. This is actually the third meeting that we've had um, that's looking at this particular collection. It is one of the collections that we have um, of fragments. So mostly this is leaves. It also includes bifolia, that is the sheets that include sort of two folios together. Um, usually these fall, it falls into sort of two, two groups. Uh, one is sort of pretty leaves that somebody said, this looks nice, I'm going to make money, <laughs> or I think this is pretty. And so these are books that are sort of purposefully cut apart, and then the pieces are sold um, as curios or something like that. And then the other type uh, that we tend to see is uh, binding fragments. So these are pieces of manuscripts that sort of fell out of use and you don't wanna waste the material. So um, you might take a, take a piece of them and put them in a, in a binding. And we're gonna see some of both of these today. So this is what we're looking at. Uh, we're gonna start with number 17 because it looks like the last time we were looking at them, we, we got through 16. So here is number 17. Um, because of the nature of these, they're out of context. So we don't tend to know a whole lot about them. That said, I have our records. I have our printed records here. Um, we, I've talked about these before. These are the records that our cataloger had um, when, when she was making the records. And I also have the records open here. So we're gonna start with folder 17. And this is a Psalter bifolium. According to our records, it's dated uh, between 1200 and 1225. Here we go. So bifolium, it is, that is, is the sheet. It was, this was at some point part of a choir. You know what, it's a little shiny. So I'm gonna take this out of, of, the, of that. So it's not quite so shiny. Um, it's a little bit, can you see it's a little curved I took it out there and now it's curving up, which will happen. Um, but this was originally um, would have been part of a choir. Um, here I think, though, that the text is continuous. So the text goes from it's hard for me to tell which is the recto and which is the verso. But let's turn this over. Um, I think this might be the, the start. So the text actually starts here and goes through and then continues and, and then it continues on to the next page, which would mean that this was actually in the middle of the choir. Uh, oftentimes when you have bifolia, the text is discontinuous, which means that it was maybe the second or third sheet instead of the middle sheet. But in this case, it's that. That's pretty interesting. Um, it was probably written and decorated in uh, Seville in early southern Spain. And the reason that we know that, and this is a little bit unusual sometimes for leaves, because this was part of a manuscript that was taken apart fairly recently, and we actually know what manuscript it was, it was taken out of. So according to the provenance information, um, this, the there was a, um, what's an imperfect Psalter, which means that it was only part of the Psalter. The Psalter had already been, take, parts of it had been taken out. So it was imperfect. It was sold at auction in 1967. 
Um, and so in 1967, this leaf was actually bound in with the rest of it to, in some, it's hard to say exactly how much, but like that. Um, and it was dispersed. So the individual leaves then were sell, sold by um, a company called Folio Fine Art. And then we sold, we bought this in 2007. Um, so between 1967 and uh, 2007, that's when the manuscript that this was a part, it already been partially taken apart and then it was fully taken apart. Okay, and this is pretty common for, for leaves like, like this. Um, there were uh, even several people who were sort of known, we call them biblioclasts, people who were known for taking apart books and selling the pieces of them. Um, and since we know the context of this leaf, because it was sold as, as part of the Psalter, um, we know that uh, we, can, we can say, we know what the saints were in the calendar um, and what the litany was. Um, so that's how we can say, this is from the diocese of Seville in, in Southern Spain because of that context. Without that context, if you just had the leaf and you didn't know that, um, it, would pro it would be harder to sort of um, uh, give it a, a date uh, and a location. Um, and that's actually, this is more information that we have for most of our leaves because most of the leaves that we have, we just don't have the context for. They're just some random leaf. Um, and you can go, you can look at the, um, at the maybe at the language of the text and you can of course look at the paleography and at the art if there's art on them. Um, but you don't, you're not usually able to say, well, this leaf is from this manuscript that had these saints in, in, the, um, in the calendar. And so that's the way we know. So, and I just like this, I think this is so pretty. I love these, um, the illuminated initials and it's just a really nice, um, really nice little, um, little uh, leaf there. So that's number 17. So I will take this away and then the red brackets. Let's see, Jim is asking about the brackets, the red brackets. Um, so, right. So we're looking at these. So there's a couple of different things happening here with the red. Um, there are some lines which are just um, filling out the ends of the, of the lines. It's just sort of saying, we're gonna fill in the lines here. The brackets here, I think, think that that is the end. Maybe someone else can confirm. I think it's the end of the previous line because there wasn't space. They didn't want to make it come out. So, so instead they put it down on this line. And I see that there is a chat. Okay, so, so that's, that's just Jim. I think that this is saying it actually belongs to the previous line. I think that that's what's happening uh, there. And if I'm wrong, someone else can, um, can come in and, and and you see it's happening down here too. I think it's just saying there's that. So they're sort of making um, uh, use of the amount of space that they have. They sort of given themselves this, they don't wanna go beyond that line because they want it to look pretty. So that's what they wanna do. All right, so I'm going to pull out number 18 here. Ah, here we go. So this is a little, this is much from a much bigger manuscript. This is a single leaf here. So I'm going to give you all a minute to look at that. And I am going to share the links and this will include a link to the record, the records. Um, for these leaves. And the way that we catalog um, this collection is that there is one record for the whole collection um, and then there are individual records for each one of the folders. So if you wanna see folder 17, you're gonna to have to, to find folder 17, but they're all in the, uh, in the link the very first link in that first one is all of the records. They are unfortunately not in order. So, but they're all there. There are, I think 53 of them, one being for the whole collection and then one for um, the other ones. All right, so this is 
folder 18. And folder 18 is a glossed Gospel of John, also dating from the 1200s. And we have less information um, about this one. Although we do know that the manuscript that it's taken from was, was formerly in the collection of Sir Thomas Phillips. Um, and then later in uh, Spurgeon's, Spurgeon's College, London. Uh, it was manuscript one, which is sort of interesting. But then again, sometime between the time that it was in this college collection and um, this, we also bought this um, in 2007 from Corich. Um, at some point, the, the manuscript was taken apart. And this time the bifolia, the, bi, the bifolias were split as well. So this is just a single leaf. So it's a glossed gospel of John. And we've looked at glossed manuscripts before, but they're always, they're always pretty interesting. So the way that a glossed Psalter works generally is you have the main text in usually in a larger, um, a larger script. And so in this case, since it's Gospel of John, you have the Gospel of John text in the middle. And then these smaller sections are the gloss, the glosses. Um, we also have, um, so these are sort of marginal. I don't know, even know if I, I would normally call these marginal glosses, but this isn't really, it's not really marginal, is it? Because what you have is three, you can see here, it's been divided into three columns. So the, the ruling is, is as far as down here. So you have three columns and the text kind of moves through the columns depending on what the scribe needs the space for. So at the top, the main text is in one column because we need to have space for the glosses on either side. And then this gloss is short. So now we can take up the second column coming down as soon as this one ends, then we can use that space again um, and so now we have a, some several lines where the te main text is three columns and then we have more glosses down here. Um, so this is, this is <laughs> pretty neat actually. There are also, and I'll zoom in so you can see a little better, there are also interlinear glosses. So in addition to these longer texts on the sides, there's shorter sort of brief, um, gr brief glosses in the middle and that might be citations or it could just be alternate text. I'm not, I don't, I'm not familiar with this manuscript, so I don't know. So we'll turn it over and we'll take a look at the other side. And it is very much the same. So again, we have um, the, sort, the one in the middle and these separate glosses. And you can see that the glosses themselves are differentiated by these brackets at the front. And we've seen this a lot before. We've talked about the sort of alternating colors as a way to sort of help the eye move through. So you know that here's the next, that one and that one, so you don't accidentally skip it. Um, and it's probably, uh, I'm finding this interesting and it's, it's, it's probably just the way that this particular page has been laid out, but it looks like the text is almost in this, in a cross the shape of a cross on both sides. Um, also, that's probably just my brain. Oh no, it doesn't really work on this side though, because that, so never mind. That was my brain doing something fun. So this is um, that. The date again is uh, 1200s, but um, there's no there's no location given for it, um, and I'm not. I mean, I kind of would like to say for like France, but you know, it looks like a lot of other, it looks like a lot of other manuscripts. So that's, that is folder. Oh, I'm hoping that somebody, yes, Lisa says it looks French. If Lisa Fagan Davis thinks it looks French, then I will, then I'll say then that that's probably, um, that's probably right. Okay, so that's folder uh, 18. So now I'm going to, and don't worry, I am going to put them all back in their little envelopes before I put them back away. Let's see. So now we're going to go with folder 19. Folder 19. Oh, look at that. 
this is again the nice thing about looking at um, at these fragments is they're all different. They're all so different. The writing on this this is quite quite a little one. So let's see what is going on with um, folder nineteen. I must call folder nineteen. So this is a manuscript leaf from something called Regime du Corps, written between 1375 and 1399. Um, so this is a little bit, a little bit later. And Bob is asking about calculation or numeration in the left margin. So I'm going to zoom in on that. It does look like it does look like somebody's. There's like a little, maybe addition there. I'm going to check the margin to see. Um, if it says anything about that. So it's, uh, it's the text is a mid 13th, it's a 14th century copy of a mid 13th century um, treatise on diet and health, supposedly written at the request of Beatrice of Provence. So that's interesting. It's from the book two. Um, and as, so if you look in the chat, you can see Lisa is saying that the calculation is probably from it was when it was used as a bind, you know, in a binding. And indeed um, it, was, it was used as a, as a binding in another manuscript. So this is not one that was, um, this, is, this isn't one where they're like, oh, this is pretty, let's cut it apart and sell it. Um, this was, this was reused parchment and you can see that there's a fold down here and there's another fold up the side. Um, so this would have been, I think, around a, um, around some sort of board. Um, I think that I'm pretty sure that that's how this was used or maybe it was a fly leaf or something. Even that, I mean, that said, it's actually in pretty, um, it's in pretty good condition. Uh, Carol is asking about the script. Um, there is, I am not, I am not a paleographer, um, but it is, so it's in middle French. Uh, no, it does say Gothic round, rounded Gothic script is what we have in the, um, in the, in the record. So it is, um, Lisa says, uh, I might call it uh, liter litera um, parisiensis, what you would like what you would find in a tiny Paris Bible. So that kind of small. Um, do, Lisa, do you think that has anything to do with the size? Like because the text, it's a small sort of small book and you're trying to write very small. Is that just a script that might be easier to write very, very small instead of something big. Um, that's sort of what I'm, yeah, ex so probably um, used with a brush. So Heidi, Heidi is asking, when you say it might have been bound around a board, would that have been covered over and visible or visible to the user? Often it, it's just visible to, it's, it's, there's not something else put over it. The, the parchment actually is the cover. The parchment becomes the cover and we have books in our collection that still have their parchment bindings and you just have um, oftentimes um, it's actually sideways <laughs> so it would be like that although in this case um, this looks like it was the book itself was not so much smaller whatever book it was used to bind was not so much smaller than this one and again it, this is actually in really good condition often if if there's a piece that's been used in a binding, it'll be quite messed up because, um, I mean, mess, I'd say messed up, I mean like dirty, you know, because it's been muffed around a lot with people rubbing on it and things. Um, and Cindy says the hands looks like something more for records than for presentation. It does look, it does look like it was kind of not, you know, whoever wrote it didn't really care if it looked super pretty or not. But again, I, as I said, was saying before, I think, I never really thought about you might use different scripts if you're writing very small versus big, but it also may just be because you're trying to fit a lot in um, in the space that you have, trying to be sort of economical before. 
All right, and I think the next one, or we have one coming up that I think is another binding fragment that looks more binding binding. And this is going to be fragment folder 20. Folder 20. Here we go. This is uh, 13th century, another 13th century leaf. Yes, here we go. So this is one. This is this is what more like what a binding fragment um, usually looks like. So let me call up, you take a quick look at that and I'm gonna find my record. Order 20. So this, this is a fragment, this leaf was used as a cover for an entire book. Yeah. So, and you can see it because, so here's the spine of the book. And then here the, here's was wrapped around the front cover and you can see here how it was folded. And then the back cover was folded here. And you can see really clearly when I'm talking about how often um, leaves that have been used as covers are get dirty. So you can see that here, this was, was folded around to the inside of the front cover. And it was, it may even, so there's, it may have been covered with a paste down or there's, there's thread here. So there was something, maybe it was attached with the thread. And, um, and you can see how much cleaner this is than the cover, because this is what was protecting, sort of protecting the book from, um, from everything on the outside. And the spine, you can see, they just wrote the title of this book. Um, up here. And so this is a really, this is a really typical example of this. You can see really clearly immediately that it was used at. Um, the leaf itself is from a late 13th century manuscript um, from France of Thomas Aquinas's commentary on a Latin translation of, of a work of Aristotle. So at some point, um, let's see, the the book that it found apparently was from 1767. So let's say in 1767, they were like, we got this book, we got to bind it. And here's this like old, you know, old piece of trash lying around and let's, um, we're not reading this anymore, so let's bind it. Um, so this was a really typical uh, use of that. Um, and again, this is another glossed, sort of glossed manuscript. So you have the main text in the middle and then the commentary on the sides. And let's take a look on the other side and see. Oh, and this is much, much cleaner. See, because this was on the inside of the binding. Um, and so you can still see the text and then the, the glosses on the side. So that's, that is um, folder 20. Okay. Let's do at least one more. I always feel, I always think I'm gonna get through more when we do these fragments ones than I think we will. But let's see, folder 21, even Serapion, manuscript by folia, this another 13th, 1300s. Oh, we have a couple here. All right, let me do a quick, I'll pull these out and I'll do a little search. And these have been, these have been chopped a little bit, it looks like. These have been trimmed. And I think they may also be binding fragments. I think this is likely. All right. I will turn this so you can see it. This one here. You can see how it's been trimmed on the left. Um, let's see, while I do this, I, I'm going to invite you also to look, Jim has put a link in there. I haven't clicked that link yet, but um, you can see what the link is. Here we go, folder 21, right? Oh, is this not folder 21? 591. Order 21. 
All right, so this is from a 13th century medical treatise uh, attributed to Ibn Serapion or Serapion the Younger, a Latin translation, obviously, of the, this Arabic text. Um, and each bifolia consists of one leaf with the complete text of two columns, Italian Gothic script. So I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see that another sort of small script. Um, leaves are from the second section of the text. Marginal sketch of a sleeping man. So we'll have to look for that. This, I'm thinking that, Chris, thank you for sending the links in. I appreciate that. Chris has, has been putting the links into the chat. Um, so it's been trimmed. And I want to say that that's because it's been used um, for binding, but I'm not seeing any other, they're not, they haven't been folded. Um, I don't know. Okay, so Lisa's saying probably a free fly leaf. That makes sense. Bound open, right? So it was sort of, it was just sort of tucked in to protect the rest of it. And here's our sleeping man. The record said we've got a sleeping man in the market. And there's a sleeping man. He's a little bit, a little bit later. Um, the, the record also says that, um, so Italian Gothic script, um, I'm guessing written in, <laughs> written in uh, then Italy or by an Italian scribe. Uh, however, each entry, um, no, what am I looking at? Um, red flourishing at the beginning of each entry possibly added in England. So what the record is, and I don't know enough to know if this is true, but it's interesting if it is that the flourishing would actually have been added um, at a later time. So if this is the case, um, then you've got an Italian manuscript um, then was in England or you know, an English scribe because people did travel around quite a lot. Um, we also have, I'm noting, um, writing sort of in the margin, which I think is probably a, a remnant of when it was used in a binding. And in this case, you can see on this, this leaf or this bifolia, there is a, a fold at the bottom. So this is something that is pointing to use as a as a as a piece of binding. Um, the provenance, again, it only goes back. Our provenance only goes back to the 1960s. It was sold to Renzo Rizzi. Uh, sorry, sold by Renzo Rizzi, who is a name I don't recognize, to Bernard Rosenthal in the 60s, and then it was also another one sold by Quaritch in 2007. So, uh, so there we go. So it is, it's actually two minutes past. I apologize for the slow start today. Um, I'll get, I promise I'll get my stuff together um, better next time. But um, so we had four, we will definitely return to this and keep looking through these um, fragments at a later point. Uh, in the meantime, thanks so much everyone for coming. And, um, oh, Bob, first timer, yay, Bob. I hope you come back. We do this every, we do this every Wednesday, every Wednesday at noon. So thanks everyone for coming and um, hope to see you again in the, in the future. Take care.